The RealAgriculture.com Beef School is presented by DuPont Pioneer. To find more Beef School episodes, go to beefschool.ca. Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com, and we are with Dr. Bart Lardner. How are you doing today? Really good, really good, Sean. Uh, with the University of Saskatchewan. Um, and Western Beef Development Centre. Perfect. Okay, we're going to talk about winter grazing corn. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a technique or a tactic that is becoming more popular. A lot of guys thinking about it. Let, let's start at the very beginning, though. When do I have to actually decide if I'm going to graze my corn? Is it a pre-planting decision or is it a decision we can make uh, beginning of September? It's a decision that I think you should do a few months in advance because corn is such a novel crop to beef producers. And so I'm always suggesting that do some planning if you've never grown corn before, it's a, it's a different approach. Uh, if, you're, if you're not in the business of farming or cropping and you just like to run cows and, and be a cow-calf producer, then certainly uh, you'll need the equipment lined up. You'll also need to know to start small. So don't go out and put in a quarter section of corn. Maybe start small. Maybe start with five, ten acres. Work with your local agronomist. Work with the resources that are out there to get that crop in the ground properly. And then you can approach, okay, how do I manage it to get it out of the ground, to get a good crop like you see behind us? And then secondly, my approach for grazing that in that fall and winter time period. So it, it is a lot of planning and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, before you get, get out there with your equipment to put it in the ground. Is there a difference in planting rates between if I'm grazing it or silaging it? You know, I think they're similar, the grazing rates. A lot of our work has been with, with grazing. Uh, corn, whole plant corn, so certainly on the silage end of things, uh, we're working with other producers on that, but, but I don't think there's a real difference. I think it really is on the number of seeds per acre, that's the big thing. Yeah. So uh, uh, some of our viewers are probably watching this and they're saying, oh, 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 oh hold on Bart, so you're telling me that I'm going to go through the cost of growing corn and then I'm going to just put the cows out in it. How does that economically pay? Well that is, that is a challenge and so we're saying to the producer, we're not telling you to grow corn. You're just asking us about advice to grow corn properly and get some good grazing management. So it really is all about uh, knowing what you're dealing with. Uh, we always, we look at, at corn as a novel crop. So it is a crop that is high energy, high starch, and as well a balance with fiber. And so we're looking for a crop that's gonna be at that right stage of maturity. But the other, the other big thing we're finding with that is if we let cows go out into 100 acres of corn, they're going to selectively choose the different plant structures. And they'll go for the cobs. The cobs are the ones that have all the starch. So we're saying limit graze. And I've always said that. We limit graze all of our extensive grazing programs, whether it's swath grazing, bale grazing, uh, uh, crop residue grazing. We use portable electric fence in our research program. And a lot of producers use that. So limit graze three to four days at a time. So you get that balance of maybe the first 24 hours of starch intake and then the next two days in terms of fiber intake. A much more balanced diet. Absolutely. So, you know, it's that challenge to the rumen. Any challenge to the rumen with high energy, high starch is going to have a negative effect on it. And we're going to see acidosis and other types of founder incidents. So it's really all about balancing the number of days, limit grazing. The other thing you're doing when you limit graze is to control utilization and try and maximize consumption of that crop because corn is a high input high risk crop we we don't always get all the good weather factors we do get early frost in Saskatchewan so we'll get our frost at Lanigan Saskatchewan September 15 uh, usually on, on a 10-year basis and so you, you you plan for that you plan for that in terms of the, the seeding date of the crop and the also the start of the grazing date is there any sort of supplementation I have to consider too if, uh, to balance out that diet? You know, that's an interesting question because a lot of our extensive grazing work has looked at the other systems I mentioned, swath graze, crop residue, bale graze. In most of those systems, we are deficient on energy when we get to those cold winter days of January and February. So we do have to come in with some type of an energy supplement, like an alfalfa hay or maybe a DDG. Corn is really unique in that it's supplying adequate, if not excess, nutrients to that gestating beef cow in that second, third trimester of pregnancy. And so, you know, in most situations, there really isn't a supplement uh, need in, in grazing that, that crop whole plant. In fact, corn, <laughs> grazing whole plant corn is the one crop that I've seen in my work where cows will actually put on condition, put on one condition score. So you really uh, do have to manage them in terms of, of limit grazing them to make sure that they don't get too uh, over conditioned coming into that calving period. 
So we talked about you need to limit, right? So you got to you three to four days, uh, use a fence. The reality though is there's going to be some residue left. What do I do next? Absolutely. You know, residue is, is, is some issues that, that we do have constant conversations with, with producers. Uh, we feel that if we're leaving, you know, 10, 15%, maybe getting it down to that 10% residue left, that's not such a bad thing because the crop that you're growing, the field you're growing it on, uh, certainly is going to be beneficial in terms of nutrient cycling and organic matter. The, some of the issues that pop up when we look at corn on corn on corn, where we're growing corn, say, for five, six years, is that residue issue. So it will tie up. It may be challenging in terms of germination the next year, and it might tie up some of those nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus in that soil profile. So I think it's an ongoing issue. Uh, you do have to go in there in the spring with special equipment and chop maybe some of those cob, those uh, uh, stalks that are left out there. That's the, really the last part of the plant that the, that the cow won't consume. And so that's what we do is, is we go in there with some heavy tillage and, but it's amazing. Uh, there are, there are other, there are years where I felt there was way too much residue. It would have a challenge on germination, but really that crop just, once it gets out of the ground, it just goes gangbusters if you, if you do everything right. And in terms of agronomy to make sure that plant's going to get a healthy start. You know, one of those things that sort of news or uh, those pieces of information sort of circulars or you know, goes around and around and it kind of continues to grow and you're not really sure if it's true is I've heard some people say I won't winter graze corn because I'm worried the cows are going to choke on the cobs. Right. Is that a risk? Well, it's, it's that what I first said earlier is that it's all about limit grazing. The cows have a preferential uh, palatability inherent behavior. They are going to select the most tasty part of the plant. It's like the ice cream part of the plant is the cob, right? And so when we let cows go into a 10 acre, 20 acre, 30 acre field, they're gonna pick cobs first. They're gonna pick cobs for the first 24, maybe 48 hours. That's gonna to lead to rumen digestive upset because there's all types of starch input there. And so <clears throat> if we can limit graze them, the first 24 hours, they're gonna go pick all the cobs and they're left with the stalk, the stover, the tassel, the leaf, all that fibrous part of the plant, including the stalk itself. And so force them, limit them, you know, the other thing that we're looking at too in some of our research is maybe, is there some way we can mitigate that incidence of rumen acidosis? And so we supply a fiber uh, supplement as well. And so we're doing some work right now looking at three versus nine day allocation of forage and a starch, uh, or sorry, uh, the other uh, factor is, is the allocation of fiber or no fiber. And so maybe supplemental straw or supplemental low quality hay along with that, with that, with that corn, uh, that you've allocated for, for grazing might mitigate or, or reduce the incidence of digestive upset. Okay, Bart, we've decided we're going to winter graze. Uh, the corn crop looks great like it does behind us. How do I know when to start and get those cows out there? Well, that is, that is, the, uh, that is the challenge. So we're really suggesting that maybe we want to look at a balance of 50% starch, 50% fiber per acre. So where is that? So that might be uh, where that corn reaches that half milk line maturity. So we're really getting uh, a balance of starch per plant as well as adequate fiber per plant. And so the timing of when you seed that particular crop uh, might be uh, when that crop's gonna stop growing with that first killing frost. And so we're hopefully uh, that crop will reach half milk line of the first killing frost. And so they can feel comfortable that maybe we can balance that uh, fiber and starch per acre by allocating the three or four days of grazing. Okay, so I don't have to wait for that first frost. I just want to get to that that milk line before the frost. You know, you know. So you're looking at a variety that's going to persist in your area. First of all, you need to know your heat units, and so go on the internet, and uh, there's all kinds of neat. Uh, Farmzone.com is the one I use, and and find the heat units in your area. These varieties that are 2100, 2200 heat unit varieties are the ones that really do are adapted and and will uh, grow lots of biomass per acre. Uh, secondly. Uh, there are some uh, producers that maybe grow a variety that's 300 heat units more than you actually get in your area. So it never reaches uh, a black layer, it never reaches grain maturity. So you're always hitting that half milk line. And possibly you can grow a blend of the two varieties. So maybe one that's 300 heat units greater than what you get versus the one that's going to be adapted to your area. So there's all kinds of tricks of the trade maybe of making sure you're not going to grow a crop for grazing that will reach full grain maturity and then you will deal with rumen acidosis issues. Okay, so let's look at the cob you got there. Wait, wait, wait. This, this, this crop's getting close. It is, it is getting very close. And so we're suggesting that it's, it's nearly half milk line. It's, there's, here's the line here as it moves towards the end of the kernel. So we're saying probably another 
uh, seven ten days it would reach half milk line and we're here sitting here what September the uh, 7th today so probably in the next 10 days we're going to see a killing frost so probably this corn is going to reach just the right maturity for grazing so the farmer did very well here he absolutely the right variety absolutely you know and the other the other conversation I have too is seeding date for corn and now I know the suggestions are maybe the end of May, maybe the 15th of May to the to the end of May. But you know, we put corn in Atlantic and Saskatchewan June 1, June 6, and June 9, and always had a fantastic crop. It's an amazing crop in that if you do take care of weed pressure until it gets to knee height, it's off to the races after that. It's a crop that does not compete with weeds, and so that's why I'm suggesting two producers who just have not had a lot of farming experience and don't know how to have the right equipment to put in corn uh, to work with your local agronomist maybe get a corn planter out there and put it in correctly also pay attention to weed pressure so probably uh, controlling weeds at that that four and that eight leaf stage is is crucial okay Bert thanks a lot for joining us today you bet mm -hmm.